I'm Eric Dietrich. I'm Shalante Brandon. I'm Rebecca Carlton. I'm Nathaniel Ryan. We are making and abandoned properties. Um, <laughs> first, I'm going to tell you the story. Um, it was about when I was a little child. You never know when you get really curious. You like to explore things you're not supposed to explore. You know, I was one of those. Um, when I was younger, I grew up in a wonderland, a kingdom, a place where there was paved streets, white houses, picket fences, nice manicured lawns, and I really don't need dogs. Um, but out of necessity, we moved because my parents couldn't afford the home anymore. So we moved down to the West End, a place where I saw people like me for once in my life. But there was a certain tension in the air. Like you had to have your head down and walk real fast wherever you went, where there was violence around every corner, where there was possibly a junkie that might, that might mug you. And because of that, I stayed behind closed doors and shut windows. Well, one day, I decided to go out and experience this concrete jungle they call downtown Louisville or the West End. And I walked down the street and I saw a house with boarded windows. It looked kind of weird because I never thought anyone could live in a house with a bunch of boards. And the door was ajar. So I walked in. It was really dark and in the middle, I could somehow see bodies crunched over, lighting a liquid with a spoon. All of a sudden, why are you here? Me, being the nice, bright child I was, I ran out, went home, shut the door behind me, locked it, and went to my bed. Can't forget that night. Why it matters. Why do vacant and abandoned property, properties is not rare occur occurrence in Jefferson County? Over 10% of all properties in Jefferson County are vacant or abandoned properties. Now, these vacant and pro abandoned properties affect our community in several ways. They detract from property values. They encourage crime and other things of that nature. Another thing that, um, another way that vacant and abandoned properties can affect our Community is by the property taxes that we lose. Whenever property values go down, the government uh, suffers. Now there are 11 billion. There's 11 billion dollars worth of property in the I-264 loop. If those properties go down by one percent in value, the metro government will lose 1.4 million dollars in revenue. This revenue is used for things like schools, police fire, and paramedics. All of these uh, services will be uh, affected if uh, this, the trend of vacant and abandoned properties continues. Another thing that happens is that um, people are being forced to buy down. In, generally, in the urban areas of uh, Louisville, there are not enough affordable housing options for people that make between 51 and 100% of the area median income. So to find affordable housing options, they're forced to buy houses that are normally uh, reserved for people that make below 50% of the area median income. So this means that basically the more affluent members of our society are being forced to buy uh, houses that are normally reserved for people that don't have as much money. And now that the people that make less than 50% of the area median income don't, uh, are being, don't have enough housing choices, many of them are forced uh, uh, to live uh, on the street or, uh, or in projects or things like that. Stakeholders, neighborhoods, communities, and homeowners. This is gonna matter for our, this is gonna matter for our homeowners because they are the ones who have to live with these houses. If you just get to live, you know, buy an abandoned property, it's not going to be a good thing on your property value. It's going to hurt your property value. It's going to hurt you. The communities, it's as a whole, if you have a lot of abandoned properties, you're not going to want businesses. They're not going to be, want to be there as much. If you don't have the business, businesses located in certain places because of the type of homeowners and the type of consumers that are there, 
if you don't have as many consumers and as many homeowners that are willing that have that disposable income to buy, you're not going to have the businesses, and that's going to hurt your neighborhood and your community. The metro government, the metro government, and the taxpayers in general, both are hurt by this because of lost revenue. When you have abandoned properties, you're not getting the taxes from those properties as well. And so the taxpayers are going to have to make up for that rent. If you see a nice, you know, abandoned property, it's lawn, it's cut, it's windows are boarded up, that didn't just come from that. Somebody had to do that and the taxpayers had to pay for that money. The metro government, therefore, has to take some of that money that they would use for other things like the thing they'll explain and use it to maintain those. Our suggestion for policy has to deal a lot with businesses because they're really the glue that holds Louisville together. Um, first, we suggest that businesses, there's a fund that um, set up for making demand properties um, to help, because uh, there's a lot of money that has to be spent in these, and right now there's a national or a federal grant, but that's not going to continue for annual um, usage. So we want to have this kind of agreement with businesses where they'll get a tax break if they donate to this fund and that helps both the city and the community and the businesses. Next, we um, suggest that there would be price breaks for businesses that want to be zoned on an abandoned property. Um, this is because like the areas uh, that have a lot of abandoned properties don't have businesses to offer them resources that they need to use, and so they have to go elsewhere. So we're hoping that these businesses that are zoned in an abandoned property in an area where there's not as much, um, there. I mean, there's a lot to offer. We want them to serve as a magnet to bring people in and get recognition. Then we ask for not only the Metro Council, but everyone in this room to kind of advocate on the state level, because right now there's a law set up where you, can, you have to wait seven years before you can do anything with a uh, with a lot that's uninhibited, it can't be declared vacant, and that's too long because then everything just is decrepit by the time that you can actually do something about.